All right, folks. How many of you have heard the term covenant before? Okay, two of you. Oh, 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 look at that. What do you think of when you think of a covenant? A promise. A promise, a deal. Okay, what else? There's, there's a, a term, covenant is often paired with marriage, right? Like a covenant marriage. I don't know if you've heard that term. Maybe not. Okay. So the Bible is full of covenants all over. I have started, whenever I find the mention of the word covenant, I do that in my Bible. And it's really interesting how many places have covenants in them all the time, all the time. Okay, so covenants, typically, okay, so say I'm gonna make a covenant with Jackson. We're going to agree on some things, okay? I'm gonna agree that I will wash his car every Tuesday, and he agrees that he will mow, your lawn. mow my lawn. I was gonna say groom my dog, but I don't have one. No, I don't have a lawn either, really. No, I have a little bit of a lawn. Yeah, we're good. As long as your car's level. No. Okay, so, so Jackson and I are going to covenant in this, right? We're going to make an agreement. I will wash your car. You will mow my lawn. It'll work. So how do I guarantee that he's going to actually hold up his end of the deal, right? So people would do different things in covenants. Sometimes they would exchange clothing, okay? So like, okay, Jackson, I'm gonna give you my belt. You're gonna give me your shoe, and that's, we're gonna agree to wash the car, right? And mow the lawn. And if one of us breaks that covenant, no oh man, now I have your shoe, right? It's things like that, okay? <laughs> we see this in marriage. In marriage, what do people exchange? Rings. I wasn't hinting by scratching my ear, okay? Rings. They exchange rings, okay? In some covenants, they would change their names, okay? I'm gonna, so Jackson and I are gonna covenant, he's now gonna be called Jack Hanna, and I'm gonna be called Haxon, because then we'll remember our covenant, okay? We see that in marriage. When I got married to Carson, I had to go through so many offices and paperwork to change my name, okay? I had just gotten a new passport with my maiden name on it. And I was like, I don't have to pay for another passport. Um, <laughs> so, so you have, uh, nothing written on the board. So you have these things that they exchange. A really serious covenant they would seal with blood. Okay, a guy would cut his hand, the other guy would cut his hand, they'd shake on it. Every time they looked at those scars, they would remember the covenant. Log that away, we're gonna come back to that. Okay, um, so God made covenants multiple times in the Old Testament. So we're gonna go through this because I want you to know about this. Uh, Hudson, can you look up Genesis 6, 18? Jackson, can you look up Genesis 9? Um, I'm going to read the 1 through 17 because that's really long and I'm going to skip through it. Jackson, can you look up Genesis 12, 1 through 3? Chloe, never mind, I'm going to do the Genesis 15. It's really long, and I like to be able to stop. I'm just writing these out, and then we'll go into them, okay? Well, you can do the Exodus 19, 5 through 6. I'll see if we keep going. 
All right, Jackson, her husband, Genesis 618. But I will establish my covenant with you, and you shall go into your house, you, your sons, your wives, and your sons' wives with you. Okay, so we have Noah. And God says, I'm going to make a covenant with you. I will establish a covenant with you. This is between Noah and God. God and Noah. Noah's family gets involved, right? So there's eight people that end up on the ark. So, um, this is called the Noahic covenant. Um, the Noahic Covenant. You will be familiar with this one. I'm going to read the Genesis 9, 1 through 17. We're going to see if we go the whole way. <clears throat> go to verse 8. Then God spoke to Noah and to his sons with him, saying, Now behold, I myself to establish my covenant with you and with your descendants after you. Okay, so this is a family thing. With every living creature that is with you, the birds and the cattle and every beast of the earth with you, all that comes out of the ark, um, even every beast of the earth. So this is Noah and the generations after. And who else? Who else is part of this covenant? We have God, Noah, the generations after. Who else is part of this covenant? Look at verse 10. And with every living creature. So the animals. Right? He says, I'm going to make this covenant. Verse 11, I establish my covenant with you, and all flesh shall never again be cut off by the water of the flood. Has God held up to this covenant? Has the earth ever been totally flooded? No. This covenant stands for Chloe. God made this covenant to apply to Chloe, and to Autumn, and to me, right? Hudson, we're not, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> okay? The animals have benefited from this. The generations after have benefited from this. Verse 12, God said, oh, he will never again be cut off the water from the flood. Neither shall there again be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is the sign of the covenant, which I am making between me and every living creature that is with you for all successive generations. I set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be a sign of a covenant between me and the earth. What is the sign of the covenant? The rainbow, right? How our world has corrupted that, right? When you see a rainbow in the sky, you can remember God has covenanted with me. He has an agreement with me to never again flood and destroy the earth. Now, are there small, like, local floods? Yes. There have been many. But there's nothing that's destroying the entire population of the earth. Right? So that covenant still stands. Now, every covenant that God makes, there is a sign. There is a sign of the covenant. Okay? Now, there's a lot of covenants between people in the Bible. Jonathan and David made a covenant. There's a lot of different covenants that are made. I don't know that all of those have a sign, right? You guys see me packing Jackson's shoe. You need to know that my lawn is going to be mowed, right? We have an agreement. Okay? You see him with my belt. He better be in a clean car. Okay, because that was our agreement that I would wash his car. Okay, so God gives everyone a sign, every one of his covenants a sign. 
So this is Noah. Now, we're going to go to Abraham. Abraham is like, I love this one. Go to Genesis 15. Uh, 12. Jackson, were you reading Genesis 12, 1 through 3? Okay, would you do that? Uh, got, no. I got ahead. Now the Lord had said to Abram, uh, Get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house, to the land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. Uh, I will bless you. I will make your name great. And, I, and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse those who curse you. And you... Okay, this is God's term of the covenant. He says, okay, Abraham, or Abram, I'm going to make a covenant with you. I will make you a great nation. You will be a blessing. I will make your name great. And in you, all families of the earth will be blessed. Now, there's a huge backstory to that about Abraham as the first one that it says he believed God and it was accounted to him as righteousness. And then later in the New Testament, it talks about how those who are are children of Abraham or are the faith like Abraham are saved. So this is talking about salvation, right? If you have faith like Abraham, if you believe in God, you will be blessed. This applies to you. This covenant applies to you. If you have faith like Abraham, we talked about salvation last week. If you've accepted that gift of salvation, you are a part of this covenant. It's kind of goosebumpy, huh? Like, whoop. Didn't know I got to be involved. Go to Genesis 15. God comes to Abraham and he says, Do not fear. Verse 1. Do not fear, Abram. I am a shield to you. Your reward shall be very great. In New King James, it says, I'm your exceedingly great reward. Abraham said, O oh Lord God, what will you give me since I'm childless? He's questioning. He's going, I don't know. You've promised all this stuff, and I don't even have a kid. Right? <clears throat> Verse 5. And he took him outside and said, Now look toward the heavens and count the stars if you're able to count them. And he said to him, so shall your descendants be, descendants be. Then he believed the Lord, and he accounted it to him as righteousness, reckoned it to him as righteousness. Abraham was saved, right? Yeah. Yeah, go for it. We're not going to wait for you, sir. Um, it was reckoned to him as righteousness, and he said, I am the Lord who brought you out of the Ur of Chaldeans to give you this land to possess it. This is the land that later became Israel. That's the land God promised Abraham. And remember, he said in Genesis 15, 16, your descendants are going to be imprisoned in bondage for 400 years, and then they will come back to this land. Verse 8, he said, O Lord God, how may I know that I will possess it? He said, you're making all these promises to me. How will I know? So he said to him, bring me a three-year-old heifer and a three-year-old female goat and a three-year-old ram and a turtle dove and a young pigeon. Then he brought all these to him and he cut them in two and laid each half opposite the other, but he did not cut the birds. The birds of prey came down upon the carcasses and Abram drove them away. Now when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and behold, terror and great darkness fell upon him. God said to him, Know for certain that your descendants will be strangers in the land that is not theirs, where they will be enslaved and oppressed 400 years, but I will also judge the nation. Okay, so he said, I'm going to bring them out. Verse 17. It came about when the sun had set and it was very dark, and behold, there appeared a smoking oven and a flaming torch which passed between these pieces on that day the Lord made a covenant with Abram saying to your descendants I have given this land from the river of Egypt as far as the great river the river Euphrates okay 
So God says, Abram goes, how do I know that this will be a thing, that this is going to come true? God says, I'm going to make a covenant with you. What did Abram bring to the covenant? Nothing. It wasn't, God's going, Abram, I'm going to do all this. You have to do all this. Right? That's like me saying, Jackson, I will wash your car, but you don't have to mow my lawn. I just want to, I just want to do that for you. Abram brings nothing to the covenant. God goes, okay, get some animals, and they cut them. It says he cut them in two. I don't know if it's Abram. Have you ever butchered an animal? Can you imagine just cutting a cow in half? That's just a lot of work, okay? And they lay the pieces out. Half of a cow here, half of a cow, half of a sheep, half of a sheep, half of a goat, half of a goat. Okay? And Abram sees, God puts Abram into a deep sleep, and then he passes through that blood. And he makes a blood covenant. I told you, some covenants involve blood. God walks through that blood and promises, this will be. This will be. Everlasting covenant, okay? Abram brought nothing to the covenant. And then God changed his name to Abraham. Okay? And I don't know the whole Hebrew, I don't know, he, I don't speak Hebrew, okay? But I think, if I understand correctly, the ham he added to Abraham is like an extension, it, it's like a piece of God's name, right? So God added him to Abram, right? So he makes this covenant that still applies to us today. Because God doesn't break covenants. He doesn't break covenants. All right. Genesis 17. certain things and then if you actually think about it it's like this was an old man like <laughs> trying to cut this cow in half right God said to him I am God Almighty walk before me and be blameless okay that's what God asks of him in the covenant that you walk before me and be blameless but because God was the only one who passed through the blood when Abraham fails that the covenant still stands Okay? If Jackson and I agree to mow each other's lawn and wash each other's car, and I don't wash his car, I have broken the covenant. Right? Abraham brought nothing to the covenant, so his actions cannot break that covenant. Thank goodness, because Abraham lost us. Right? Same with Noah. It wasn't like, hey Noah, you have to do this or this covenant breaks. Oh, you did it. Flood the world again. Right? God doesn't, uh, whew, thank goodness, he doesn't <laughs> rely on humans, okay? I am God Almighty, walk before me and be blameless. Verse 2, I will establish my covenant between me and you, and I will multiply you exceedingly. Abraham fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with you, and you will be the father of a multitude of nations. Abraham's just laying on his face, and God's telling him this. Have you ever had somebody say something to you that blesses you so much you just start crying? Guys, maybe not. But when somebody just encourages you and challenges you and blesses you with their words, I have. Picture this happening. Abraham's laying on his face before the Lord and God says, I'm going to bless you. I've made a covenant with you. Verse 4, you will be the father of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be called Abram. Now your name shall be Abraham, for I will make you the father of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings will come forth from you. 
I will establish my covenant between me and you and your descendants after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant. This covenant will not end. Everlasting. To be God to you and your descendants after you. I will give to your descendants after you the land of your sojourn, all the land of Canaan, for an everlasting possession. This is why you don't mess with Israel. God gave Abraham that land for an everlasting possession. That's why when people are trying to fight Israel, good luck. Israel as itself may not be a great nation right now, may not be walking with the Lord, but God made an everlasting covenant with Abraham that that's his land. If you ever want really interesting reading, read about the Six Day War. All the nations surrounding Israel were going to, they told them we're going to just drive them into the sea, the Mediterranean Sea there, and just destroy them. And instead of Israel waiting to be attacked, they attacked every single nation surrounding them simultaneously. And in six days, everybody went, we're done. We'll leave you alone. It's, it's incredible. Okay, just read about the six-story war. It's really cool. For an everlasting covenant, and I will be their God. Verse 9, God said further to Abraham, Now as for you, you shall keep my covenant, you and your descendants after you throughout their generations. This is my covenant which you shall keep between me and your descendants after you. Every male among you shall be circumcised. You shall be circumcised in the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be the sign of of the covenant. Okay? What is the sign of this covenant? Circumcision. I think I spelled that right. Okay? Circumcision. They circumcise the men. Okay? So, that's the sign. Now, a whole bunch of people in the Bible in the New Testament decided, well, that's what makes you saved. False. Faith is what makes you saved. This is the sign of the covenant. The rainbow is not what saved Noah from the flood. It's a sign of the covenant. Okay? Covenants have signs. Um, did you have Exodus 19, 5 through 6? Yeah. Read that for me, would you? Now, therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be a special treasure to me, loved all people, for all the earth is mine. And you shall be these are the words which you shall, shall speak to the children of Israel. Hey, this is Moses. We're going to talk about, I think we're going to go through Exodus next week. I love the book of Exodus, and we're going to just study some of the principles in Exodus. So we'll get, we'll cover more of Moses' covenant, okay? Um, yeah, we need to hurry. Um, Moses' covenant. We'll talk about it more next week. But the sign... The agreement, the contract of the covenant, this might blow your mind, was the Ten Commandments. That was the contract. God came to the people and said, will you agree to be my people? And they said, yes. That was the terms of the covenant. He said, you do these things, this covenant will be. Exodus is more like a marriage covenant. We'll talk about it next week. It's powerful. The sign of the covenant. is the Sabbath. You were the only people who took a Sabbath. And all the nations would go, why? Oh, that's the sign of the covenant that they have with God is the Sabbath, this agreement, okay? Um, hmm. Go to Jeremiah. Uh, Mommy, would you read Jeremiah 31, 31 through 34?
Jerusalem and take a goat to the priests to have them sacrifice it so we can have a relationship with God. No, we get a relationship with God. We can have our sins forgiven and our sins will be remembered no more. This is the covenant, right? This is the covenant that God has made with us. So, throughout the New Testament, You'll hear the term. And through the New Testament, it's prophesied for years in Jeremiah. Go to Jeremiah 36. Jeremiah 36, 22. I don't know that we're going to have time to read all of it, but... <laughs> This is not right. I was doing so good, guys. Oh, Ezekiel, that's why. <laughs> Go to Ezekiel, sorry. same way he took the cup after they had eaten, saying, this cup is for this cup, saying, this cup which is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. Do 
do you guys realize when you take communion, you're reminding yourself of this covenant? Did you know that? No, you know. <laughs> okay. Communion is one of the signs of the covenant. It's a reminder that this is what we have access to. This is what we get to be a part of. This is the covenant that God makes with us. Notice he requires nothing of us but faith. He doesn't go, Chloe, I have all of this available for you if you do this, this, and this. No. Acts 16.31 says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. It doesn't say, believe and do this and this and this. There's a lot of people that want to add an and there. Right? Other than and you will be saved. Okay? Um, Felicia, Hebrews 9, 15. For this reason, he is the mediator of a, new of a new covenant, so that since a death has taken place for the redemption of the transgressions that were committed under the first covenant, those who have been called bear the promise of the eternal inheritance. Okay. So we have, we have a new heart, is the sign of the covenant, and we have communion is the sign. Now remember that a lot of covenants are sealed with blood. Alicia, read your verse again. For this reason, he is the mediator of the new covenant, covenant, so that since the death, since the death has taken place for the redemption of the transgressions that were committed under the first covenant, those who have been called may receive the promise of the eternal inheritance. Okay, Jesus died. He gave his blood. What verse talks about his scars? Remember how I told you of the covenant? They sometimes cut themselves, shake hands, mingle their blood, and then when they saw that scar, they remembered the covenant. Jesus still bears those scars, okay? He's not going to forget that covenant because he's got it right here, okay? So blood was shed to establish this covenant. Our sign of the covenant is a new heart, a heart that's soft and moldable and workable for God, that's correctable and teachable, and that the Holy Spirit that lives in you can continually mature and grow. That little voice in you when you know you're going to do something wrong, that goes, no, it's okay. When you start listening to that, that soft heart. Okay? And then the sign of communion. Next time you take communion at church, I hope it has a way bigger, mind-blowing meaning of, wow, this is part of the covenant with the Lord. I bring nothing to the table but faith. And God does everything else. Okay? Any questions? Any questions? Whew. Let's call it a wrap. Okay? Lord, thank you for today. Lord, thank you for your covenant. Lord, it I know all this and it just blows my mind what you bring to us. Lord, what you reveal to me as a pocket. Lord, you are so good. You are so faithful. Lord, we are so grateful. Lord, I pray that we will keep our hearts just increasingly softer toward you. That we will walk in this covenant that we've brought nothing to the table for. Lord, thank you for the new covenant. Thank you for communion, for all that you've established. Thank you that you are good. And that we can understand that these covenants.
covenant will hold forever because of your character. Thank you for all that you are and all that you've done for us. Lord, I pray that we be soft toward you this week as you speak to us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. I gave you guys your homework, right? Any, any questions on that? So, if there were, sorry. <laughs>